Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Men of color are more than basketball players. Uh, we are more than movie stars. Um, and I want people, specifically men of color, to know that you are loved. Women of color are like They're killing my, it. <laughs> they're like yeah. my dream. Like they have found they a way it. to come together and to build and to unite and move forward. Yeah. They have conferences, they have um, expos, they have network, all of these type of things. And you don't see enough of that for men of color. Yeah, that and that's cool. what we want to create and what the brand wants to focus on. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Real Talk session. I am your host, Taryn Morgan, founder and creative director. And today I'm in New York, took that long ride, but it was worth it. Here with the editor-in-chief and founder of the Quintessential Gentleman magazine and media platform. How are you doing today, sir? Eric Thomas. I'm doing good. I'm doing uh, good. How pleasure. are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing good, well. Good, good. frat. You know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Members of Alpha Phi Fraternity Incorporated. You know, he, he a little older than me, you know what I mean? But it's all good, though. Wow. <laughs> wow. See how yeah. this started already. <laughs> yes, sir. So, um... Thank you for having me, first off. Of course. I met you at the Gentleman's Factory, yes. um, an event that was held alongside of the Creative Collective. Yep. Um, and you guys definitely had some dope conversations, especially mm -hmm. dealing with men. Yep. That's especially needed in this time and day because there's not that many resources for black men in particular. Yep. And that's where you, your uh, platform comes in and mm -hmm. fills that void, definitely. Yep. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, the quintessential Gentlemen. Sure, no problem. So the Quintessential Gentleman is a media platform that focuses on the positive achievements of men of color. Okay. So what we um, really focus on is telling the stories for men of color. May that be the entrepreneur or the um, corporate um, gentleman who's, you know, kind of worked his ranks up in corporate America mm -hmm. to, you know, music, um, lifestyle, fashion, all of that. Um, but we really just try to create content that makes sense for us and told by us. Um, and it was just important. It is important for us to just show that there are different levels to men of color um, and then making sure that we can, you know, focus on the conversations and have more conversations within our community. Thank you for breaking that down. Um, and especially like, the platforms that we had existing for black men, you know, the fashion stuff, yep. uh, the stuff in terms of sports, that's mm -hmm. all of us, but we don't really have anything more so speaking to the holistic development Correct. and ho holistic wealth of black men, definitely. So what were some of the things that really inspired you to start your platform? I uh, started my platform in 2016, why well, should be four years um, coming up in a couple months. See, when you put it that way, like, it just makes it feel old, <laughs> you know what I mean? It feels old, but it's yeah. not. You know, we started out in 2016, but we started off as a blog. Yeah. And um, at that time, I really just wanted to create a platform that focuses on men of color mm -hmm. um, and just showing the success of them. I felt like there, at that time, there was, um, you know, a lot of black men being shot by police officers, which still happens yeah. at this time, which is terrible but at that time um you know we were just now getting it on video camera and a lot of things um were populating at that time and then also you know the gossip blogs and all those things were mm -hmm. really gearing up and i just was looking at these things and seeing just your baby mama the drama yeah. you have child support you uh, you know it's being killed and we just men of color were just really shown in a negative light and i really wanted to create this space to where there's just no negativity i just want yeah. to promote all the positive things that men of color are doing yeah and it's funny that you say that, too, because around that time, that's when Eric Garner yep. unfortunately happened. And um, I was working at a predominantly white institution. Okay. And when I came there, there was no outrage. Wow. Like, no one was talking about what was happening. Um, the black students yep. didn't even know what's going on. You right. know, and that's something, like, that really enraged me. And that kind of awoken the... Uh, kind of like the, the black activists in me and whatnot, right. and wanting to really provide a change for uh, black people in general, and specifically black men too. So I definitely applaud you for doing that during a time that's, yeah, it was yeah. a tough time, definitely. You know, I, it's crazy. I always say that creating this platform has made me more more of that pro-black um, yeah. attitude. Because um, I went to, you know, I was born in Philly, but then I went to high school in South Jersey. Okay. I went to, um, there were a predominantly white high school. Then I went to yeah. um, a PWI, um, predominantly white institution um, college for people that don't know that. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah, yeah, sorry. Really <laughs> sorry about that. Um, you know, and... Everything was like 
I just didn't really, you know, my parents are both, um, you know, my father was born in Nigeria, my mother yeah. was born in Trinidad. And so, you know, my, my whole experience wasn't really about black America. Um, yeah. It was really about, of course I knew I was black, of course I knew um, that slavery and things of that mm -hmm. um, nature happened, but it wasn't, you know, they weren't teaching it in schools and then my parents didn't really know because they're yeah. not from here. So all of my history kind of comes from just conversations back on their end about, you know, Trinidad and Nigeria and stuff like that. So me creating this platform really just started hearing the stories from men of color, just hearing stories about black people yeah. and just seeing like the systematic oppression, like seeing it you know going through the days it just really opened my eyes so it's like i feel i'm so pro-black right now and that's yeah, something definitely. I, you know really wasn't in my head that i thought that that would be where i was or yeah. where i would end up doing and especially especially in black families because i can't right. speak for anyone else right. um and especially coming from um your first generation or your parents were here too my parents were here too your parents are here too. Okay, cool. Yeah. So like, it's a lot of different cultural differences and whatnot. Right, right. But I can speak from my black experience that we didn't talk about emotional wellness. Right. We didn't talk about relationships, and necessarily it was work, work, work. You're right. gonna figure it out. We don't show weakness. Right. But you know, over the years, that kind of wears away at you, and right. those cracks start to come. So I think it's crucial that resources are available to black men, especially right. like your platform, definitely. Right. So uh, once again, I'll salute right. you again. Right. So. Um, were you always into journalism or like what was your path to starting quintessential? <laughs> <laughs> no, journal okay. being where I am now, writing, interviewing people, all of that stuff, um, I never thought that would be my thing. Um, growing up, of course, I feel like everyone kind of feels like they'll be on TV or feel like they'll be yeah. in entertainment because that just seems cool. And I had that same trajectory and I'm thinking that's what I was doing. But I actually grew up um, thinking I was going to go to law school. So mm -hmm. I actually have a degree in political science mm -hmm. um, and took the LSAT, about to go to law school. And then I just was like, do I really want to spend all this money on a degree that I'm not sure if I want to do and not sure where in law that I want to yeah. do and things like that. So um, I ended up working first. I'm like, oh, well, I'll get some experience and then i'll go back to law school yeah. i don't think i'm going back to law school don't tell my mom <laughs> that though yeah. but um so i had, I had no experience in journalism anything like that but i love conversations yeah. um i love the conversation that we're having right now the conversation that we had at the gentleman's factory during um the event it was those type of things i do enjoy so yeah. you know i started the blog out um as just you know being able to promote and have those different interviews and conversations and then it kind of grew into you know there's a media oh. platform now we have um a magazine component to it and then Dope. we have events that we um are doing and going to continue to do that kind of start those conversations so it kind of worked out that way but it definitely yeah. wasn't in the cards in my head yeah and that's the, the common like denominator when you look at successful entrepreneurs mm -hmm. They started in one way and they went to a whole different lane. Yep. So, you know, I think that, you know, that's important, especially for the youth to see, because right. I know I'm, I'm from the millennials. I'm born 87. I mean, okay. like we were taught you go to college. It's the only way you gonna get a good paying yep. job. We got scammed. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got scammed. Yeah, man. Like and now you got everyone looking for the trade stuff and yep. the creative is flourishing nowadays. Yep. But they don't have that blueprint. So that's why I feel that conversations like this are important so right. people can see the paths that you've taken to get to this point and hopefully, you know, use it as a guide, you know, see what you did well, see what right. you didn't do well, right. prove upon it, you know, definitely. So and just trying everything and anything you can. Like yes. I was, you know, working at a job um, when I was in Miami at the time, right out of college. Mm. And, you know, I was working there and I was like, oh, let me just do an internship. I wasn't getting paid anything like that. Um, but I said, just try it and see what happened. And yeah. then everything kind of moved, you know, then I started, you know, started an internship at a radio station. Then I started working at the radio station. I started at, um, I actually was old, even older. Um, I interned for this celebrity publicist. Like yeah. I wasn't getting paid anything, but I got the experience. And then, you know, it kind of allowed me to make these connections and networks to now be able to even do more of what I'm doing now. Yeah. But it's important for people to, you know, one, there's a new generation where they're like, oh, I got to get paid for the work that I'm doing. That whole internship conversation yeah. is, you know, crazy to me because back in our day, we was foot to, it didn't you matter. Do, you you know, you're still doing it. I mean, I'm still doing it. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we do that, you know, you don't get paid for, but it'll work out in the end. And I don't feel like 
this current generation understands that. Yeah. Um, they just think everything's monetary. And then I think also social media plays a big piece in that too, where you're comparing your lives, thinking that, oh, I can do X, Y, and Z yeah. just because you see this particular person doing mm -hmm. it. So, And especially like social media provides a facade. Mm -hmm. They don't really show what it took to get there. Yep. And we live in a microwave age. Yep. Everyone wants it instantly. People yep. don't realize the value within those free opportunities. Yep. You're getting valuable experience that you're not going to get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. The experience that you need, they say, oh, you need a master's degree and five years worth of experience. Right. What you going to do if you were waiting for those paid internships? Right. But you got a free, uh, bunch of free opportunities. So right. I think that's really crucial. Right. Um, what was one of the biggest struggles that you had that made you question, like, do I want to do this? Um, biggest struggles... I would just say one is like the timing aspect of it. So um, I fund everything. Um, yeah. Everything's on me. So, you know, I work a full time job um, as well as um, when I started, I was working a full time job. So trying mm. to juggle um, making sure I have time, you know, right after work, I'm going to events or I'm writing articles I'm working with my team. And on the weekends, I'm yeah. here doing, you know, interviews or speaking with different people. So mm -hmm. um, sometimes I always kind of think about, you know, the people that, you know, they work their nine to five job and then at six o'clock they go into happy hour yeah. and or they're going home and going to sleep or they're going home and playing video games. I can't tell you the last time I played a video game. <laughs> I was, so um, I got some shows I need to watch. <laughs> shows stuff like that. You know, yeah. I end up watching shows, but I'm working watching them probably for you know the media platform to do some cover stuff like that which is great yeah. um but i also think it's just it's very overwhelming mm -hmm. um because there's so much foundation that has to be done um and then not having the resources to be able to do so so yeah. you know the funding and then uh you know trying to get you know advertisers and trying to get brand partnerships and things yeah. like that is really a challenge when you're a new platform because you have all these ideas you know the good thing about it is we do have um kind of the connections and mm -hmm. we kind of articulate the brand to where people want to be a part of it yeah. um, but it's just hard to kind of put people in place you know from you know videographers photographers mm -hmm. um, and then being able to put together events that's a challenge as well yeah definitely and I think one of the most important things that really stood out to me what you just said is time yeah. people don't really understand the value of time right Y'all seeing this like later on, but back in the day, like right now, I'm broke, broke, and I don't have a job. I'm in between jobs right now, but it's one of those things where I maximize my time to work on this business, right. and it's paying off. Those things that I planted are now blossoming. Right. So the fact that you know you have the funds to feed your organization, you know right. that's important, but right. you don't have that time. So right. it's really just recognizing the balance of life because ultimately, it's not all work. Right. And necessarily, if you're working for someone else and you have dreams, you need to take that time to invest in yourself also. Right. So you have to find the time. So I think that that's really crucial. You know, put down that little Netflix controller, you know what I mean? If it's not contributing to your future, yep. put down the video games. If you have a dream, like, yep. it's not going to get there. The key is execution, you know? Yep. And that's what you're doing right now. If you didn't execute, then you wouldn't be at this point, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So what do you see... Um, your platform going with the next five years? Next five years, I really want it to be um, a staple. Like I want to be able, right now we do a lot of things around celebrities. Okay. Um, we kind of, I won't say focus on them. We do kind of half and half where it's the everyday person that you haven't yeah. heard about. Um, but it's, and real quick, I'm going to stop you too. He got some, some real celebrities though. Like, <laughs> like I looked at the magazine, I'm like, dog, how, how you get these different people? Like, Yo. <laughs> so yeah, like, you know. We've been, we've been, we've been blessed. Uh, we work hard at it. Um, um, you know, and we're grateful for the partnerships with those celebrities. Um, and once we get to a particular reach or a particular audience, mm. we really want to bring in, you know, someone, you know, um, John Smith that, you know, works at a car dealership or whatever. Yeah. And he owned his first car dealership and we put him on the cover. And now the majority of people know him because, oh, that was a guy on the quintessential gentleman's cover, yeah. you know? So for us, it's um, building an awareness, building the audience, um, increasing that in five years, as well as starting to have um, more events. I want to start having these conversations, conversations about mental health, yeah. conversations about um, how to be better men, how to progress, um, workshops, things mm -hmm. like that. So it's really, you know, I always say women and women of color are they like killing my, it. <laughs> They're like Ugh. my dream. Like they have found they a way it. to come together and to build and to unite and move forward. Yeah. They have conferences. They have um, expos. They have network. All of these type of things. And you don't see enough of that for men of color. Yeah, and that's what we want to create and what the brand wants to focus on. Yeah. And I think that's important too. Like a lot of men just need to put their pride and ego to the side. Yeah. Like forget all that macho stuff. Yep. 
if you don't have the mind involved, you won't be your maximum capacity possible. Yeah. So I think it's crucial, you know, that men really take that time to invest and grow self-awareness, work yeah. on them issues that you have from the past. Fam, she broke up with you when you're 15. Get over it. <laughs> Get over I mean, it. like, That's go it. to therapy. Like, yep. seriously, yep. it helps people. Um, so, I mean, I think it's also important, too, that, you know, we also kind of lean on each other. I feel like, yeah. you know, women, they hey, hey, girl, you do X, Y, Z, can it help? Or hey, can how can you do this or whatever? And it goes back to your conversation, um, your statement about pride and ego. Like, if you have something, hey, can you help me out? Or how'd you do this? Like, let's yeah. not be prideful in asking, but let's also not be prideful in not giving your secret or your recipe. I feel like men always think that there's only, especially men of color, there's only one top dog that can be there. Nah, so I can't bring you up. I can't help you. I can't do anything like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, for us, I feel like we lend ourselves to give a platform so that people, you know, we promote whatever they got going on, yeah. their different activities, their products, all that stuff. Uh, you know, we, it's kind of hard when we don't have a lot of writers and stuff to be able to do it. So, yeah. we, you know, try our best to get as many people as possible. Um, but, you know, it's us kind of lending that hand to promote. Definitely. So if there was one thing you could talk to, like, younger Eric, when mm -hmm. you're starting this whole venture right here. Yep. What's the number one advice that you would give to younger Eric? <sighs> younger Eric and now. Just do it. Um, I, be I always believe that I have like all of these grandiose ideas mm -hmm. and, um, it just gotta be so big. It gotta be meaningful. It gotta be all of that. But yeah. every time that I think I want to do something so high, I think about it. I don't have this. I can't do this. And all that time that I'm thinking about it, it doesn't yeah. happen instead of just saying, well, let me try it on a smaller scale mm -hmm. and then it can grow. So I feel like my younger self is just try it. Why? It, the worst thing that happened, it yeah. failed. Okay. This school, I had um, plenty. This is like my fourth venture that I've had That's what's up. that, you know, kind of clung on, you yeah. know. Um, I've but had, at least you shot them, you shot them shots. Though. Shot them That's shots. The yeah. You know, you have to do that. And it's crazy and yeah. because I had a marketing firm that, you know, grossed a lot of money, more money than um, the magazine is doing right now. Uh -huh. And, you know, I kind of put that away. But this is the one that stuck. This is the one that people can see. This is yeah. the one that people are um, kind of gravitating to. So it kind of feels like this is the passion. This is the purpose. So just for the younger myself and people out there, just try. Just do it yeah. and just kind of see what happens. Yeah. And I've been listening to your namesake, Eric Thomas. You heard him, the motivation speaker? Like every, yes. When I say I'm about to Eric, interview Eric Thomas, like, oh, the motivation speaker? I'm yeah. like, nah, nah. He's he not, he not there yet. He's going to be there eventually. Yeah. Listen, he, I know they tagged me in all his stuff. Yeah. I know he mad at me. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> You know Sorry, I mean? But that's one of the biggest lessons I learned too, and that helped me really to up my productivity right. just to execute, get it going, yep. really. So, like, that's one of my motivational things. So, like, what motivates you to do what you do? I actually get motivated by seeing other people achieve their um, dreams um, yeah. and working towards it. There's so many people in my life that I see are kind of doing the work, mm -hmm. um, and it's not necessarily the people who are already there, which is great, and I aspire, you know, to be like them. Um, but I just like the hustle, the grind. Um, I like when people around me are also hustling and grinding because they understand it because it's lonely. You know, yeah. when you, yeah. not everybody understands why they don't I can't get your go vision. out because I got to do this or, you know, I'm tired because I've been up editing this magazine all yeah. night or whatever the case may be. Um, and, you know, I kind of, I really get motivated by people who are just following their passion and realizing, you know, I have a purpose and working towards that and yeah. not just, oh, this is nine to five. Okay, this is cool. This is my life and I'm going to move forward. So there's so, I feel like we've really, you, you, I'm trying to be careful of it because I feel like we're in an age now to where being an entrepreneur is cool, mm -hmm. but you go through it and that stuff will phase out. The people who yeah. just doing it just to be cool, that'll phase exactly. out. Exactly. Like, you know you're doing it right when you get every single emotion. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and that's like years later and you yep. still want to go and yep. do it. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things like I wanna, really and see. You, yeah. And if anyone that's an entrepreneur said they don't want to quit or never wanted to quit, they're lying to you. I want to quit right now. <laughs> Listen, it is it's every time yeah. something doesn't go your yeah. way or something's challenging, you just you just think about, okay, I could just quit and do my 9 to 5. Exactly. Maybe I don't need to do, you know, I can cap out at 150, you know, yeah. and call it a day. Um, but it's it happens, but you move forward and mm -hmm. you got to do it. Yeah, but I know at least with us, I know those regret regrets. Yes. I mean, like, I don't really know you well, but I can tell, like, the nope. regret, like, you don't want to have that there, you know, nope, the passion. Not at all. Yep. Especially, like, with the, the level of detail. That's one thing that really stood out with the magazine, just, like, the, the way it's designed and whatnot. Like, just really 
bringing different elements together. Because, like, I come from the double XL, the source days, okay. and all that stuff. So, yeah. you know, it kind of phased out then. But still seeing that there's still the art there within mm -hmm. the magazine, you know, that's definitely something that really stood out to me. Definitely. Right. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, one thing I like to do with all my guests is provide them with a microphone to talk to society. Okay. So, what is your message that you would like to say to society? Sure. Talk to you guys, society. So... To society, I want you all to know that men of color are more than basketball players. Uh, we are more than movie stars. Um, and I want people, specifically men of color, to know that you are loved um, and to know that it is hard being who you are, but we are, you are resilient. And um, you just have to keep fighting. And the world will come to realize who you are and respect who you are. But it's going to take for you to respect yourself and respect your community first before they can. Facts. And also, I want to add on, just help your fellow brother. Help. That's the please. main thing, you know. Support. We are stronger united than divided. Yep. Put, put the petty beefs aside, you know, yep. piece it up is whatever. Because yep. there's plenty of money out here for us. Everybody's got to come together, get it, you know, it. use the resources. So I want to thank you for inviting me out. You know what I mean? Have me thank here, you. sir. Um, can you let everybody know how they can reach you, how yep. they can check out the magazine, how they can purchase stuff for the magazine? Also. Perfect, perfect. So uh, The Quintessential Gentleman, you can follow us online, uh, thecutegentleman.com. It's also all of our social media handles, The Cute Gentleman. And we have our platform, our media platform. We're updating articles every, every day. We're putting new content up there, social media channels as well. Our magazine comes out quarterly, and you can follow me on Instagram and all those social media channels at Eric Thomas K. Um, E-R-I-C T-H-O-N-S. Uh, it's been a pleasure. You know, make sure y'all support this man. He's doing amazing work and there's going to be way more to come in the future too. Thank you for your support and thank you for tuning in to another episode Real Talk Session Series The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series The Revolution Will Be Digitized. <laughs> it's P-Simple, the revolution will be digitized.